Hi everyone. Today we are going to study about the interpersonal skills of a system analyst. Every system analyst must have interpersonal skills because we know that system analysts work extensively with staff in key positions in an organization. So the organization for which a system analyst is working, he needs to work extensively with the people or staff who are in higher authority positions or who are the in key positions. He needs to extensively work with them, interact with them. So for that reason, a system analyst must possess interpersonal skills. So for that reason, as I said, interpersonal skills are necessary for success of a system analyst. Now talking of interpersonal skills, they can further be classified into four categories. And these four categories are communication skills, working alone as well as in a team, facilitating groups and managing groups. So these are the four categories in which interpersonal skills can be divided and we will study each category in detail. And first of all, we will study the communication skills. A system analyst should be able to communicate clearly and effectively with others. When we talk of communication skills, that means that whatever we are communicating, that is clear to the other person who is listening to us. There is no ambiguity in what we are saying. And it is conveyed effectively. The other person is convinced with it. So what we are trying to say and what the other person is able to understand, both the things should be same. That means we should be able to communicate clearly. And also the other person should be convinced of what we are saying. That is, we should be able to communicate effectively. So these communication skills are very important for a system analyst who is uh, communicating uh, with the people in an organization on a daily basis and his main aim is to first of all convince people of what his ideas are. So communication skills are very important for any system analyst. She or he must establish a good relationship with clients early in the project and maintain it throughout the project. See, when you want to convey anything to the other person, when you want that uh, something that you're communicating gets communicated clearly and effectively, for that you need to have a good relation with the other person. Only then will he listen to you at first place. So, for that reason, it is very important that a system analyst, ha analyst has or establishes good relationship with the clients from the very beginning of the project and then it has to be maintained throughout the project so that this relationship is maintained and the client listens to what the system analyst wants to say. Now interpersonal communication subjects are when we talk of communication skills so there the interpersonal communication subjects are your business speaking that means you should know a formal way of communicating to the people or of the organization you are working with then comes business writing business writing basically refers to the format of communication style used in professional settings what formats are used in professional settings and you must abide by those formats you cannot use informal language for business writing uh, that means the system analyst must be know how reports are made, how e emails are sent, how memos are made or proposals, etc. How all these things are done in a formal way. So business writing typically aims to convey information clearly and concisely. It follows a specific format, uses a professional tone and focuses on efficiently conveying information to achieve specific business objectives or goals. The third interpersonal communication subject is interviewing. That means the system analyst must have a knowledge of how to interview the clients or the members of the organization so as to extract as much information as possible from them in order to understand the user requirements. Then is listening. 
to uh, get a perspective of the client team it is very important that the system analyst is a good listener so he must have listening capabilities also then comes technical writing that means that means he must be proficient in uh, writing the software and hardware specifications in a technical manner then the another category of interpersonal skills is working alone or as a team a system analyst must be able to organize and manage his or her own schedule commitments and deadlines because many people in the organization will depend on his or her individual performance but system analyst must work with the team towards achieving project goals so basically this means that uh, that he should be that means the system analyst should be able to work alone as well as in a team because there are certain things which are certain task which are the responsibility of the system analyst alone so for that he must be able to work alone on his own and there are certain uh, goals or objectives that can be met together as a team so he must be able to know how to work together in a team he should have both the skills working alone as well as in a team his major task uh, is to organize and manage his or her his or her own schedule now when he has to work alone so he should be able to organize and manage his schedules and commitments so that whatever commitments he has made they are within the specified deadlines because many people in his team who are working with him will be dependent upon his or her individual performance many a times it may be that the output given by the system analyst works as input for the team members also they look up to him and if he does his task properly and in time the team members will also be motivated to do the same and the system analyst must also work with the team towards achieving the project goals the third sub -cat uh, the third category of communication skills is facilitating groups when i say facilitating groups this means that the system analyst is required to be a facilitator now being a facilitator is specifically required when the system analyst is working in joint application development approach which is also known as jad right now we will not go into the details of jad because we have already started jad or joint application development approach i will uh, give the link of this video in the description so in the jad uh, approach or the joint application development approach as you know system analyst works in groups works in groups during the system development he works together with the users managers uh, to uh, achieve a specific goal of system development now you may ask yeah, that uh, a system analyst has to work uh, as a facilitator in facilitating groups but then what is a facilitator so basically a facilitator is a person who helps a group of people to work together better and understand their common objectives and plans and then focus on how to achieve these objectives during meetings or discussions he is the one who plans meetings and manages those meetings or events basically to ensure that those meetings uh, 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 finally achieve the agenda of the meeting and uh, help in uh, achieving the goals or objectives of the organization so for this reason uh, i said that whenever a system analyst works in a joint application development approach he would work as a facilitator that is helping facilitating groups now the system analyst basically use jad sessions to gather system requirements whenever a system analyst works with the uh, users and managers together in a team within an organization and for the organization for which he is working it is basically to gather system requirements and conduct 
the design reviews so when i say design review basically design review involves evaluating the project here we are talking of the software project so design review here involves evaluating the uh, project at various stages of development you know there are various stages of system development life cycle so that means evaluating the project at each and every stage this is done to ensure that a product meets its specifications and compiles with the standards specified system analyst can be asked to work as a facilitator when he is working in jad sessions now as i told you that the facilitator is responsible for managing groups in meetings conducting meetings uh, arranging the meetings so the facilitator must guide the group without being part of the group that means the facilitator must be neutral as he is the one who is arranging the meetings so he cannot take sides and he has to be neutral and must work to keep the effort on track and see to it that nobody deviates from the track how by helping the group resolves differences when different people are working together in a group it is quite obvious that different mindsets are working so it is possible that they may not agree upon the same decisions all the time so it is the responsibility of the system analyst as a facilitator to ensure that whenever there are any differences in the people of the group he resolves those differences now there are specific guidelines for a facilitator which the system analyst as a facilitator must follow first of all he should make sure that what is the purpose of a meeting whenever jad meetings or jad sessions are being conducted the system analyst must ensure or make sure that the uh, people who are attending the meeting know that what the purpose of this meeting is the system analyst must make sure that the group understands what is expected of them and you during these meetings or at the end of the meeting in order to achieve the objective of the organization the system analyst must make sure that the people of the group understand what is expected of them and what is expected of the system analyst then he must reward the group members for participation with thanks and respect basically this is to motivate that every person involved in the development is or uh, from the client side participates in the meeting so to motivate them the system analyst must reward the group members and that is by giving thanks and respect the more thankful you are towards them the more respectful you are towards them the more motivated they will feel to attend the meeting then in order to have opinions the system analyst must ask questions instead of passing statements then uh, when the questions are asked among the people of the group so the system analyst needs to be patient and he needs to wait patiently for the answers from the group members when the group members are giving answers the system analyst must be a good listener at that time and should not give opinions or should not intervene in between the system analyst must encourage group members to feel ownership of the group goals and of their attempt to reach those goals so basically the uh, whole idea is to play with the psychology of the group members so the more a, a system analyst encourages the group members to feel ownership of the group goals the more they will participate when you make someone some, uh, when you involve someone uh, more into Uh, the project development phases or you make them feel as if they own the project they will take more responsibility as compared to when you treat them as subordinates so it is important that the system analyst encourages them to feel owners of the group goals and their attempts to reach these goals the fourth uh, category the fourth category of the interpersonal skills is managing the expectations so uh, a system analyst during the system development 
he must know how to manage the expectations of the clients basically you know that system development is a change process whenever a system a new information system is being developed that will introduce change in the organization because the old information system will be replaced by a new information system so that for that reason we say that system development is a change process and members of any organization greet any organizational change with anticipation they are worried about how will happen what will happen once this system is introduced how whether they will be able to use it properly or not and with uncertainty they are not sure how will the system will work or how well they'll be able to use it so whenever any new system is introduced into an organization the organizational members always treat it with anticipation and uncertainty the organizational members will have certain ideas about what new information system will be able to do for them because they have certain requirements on the basis of those requirements collected by all the uh, users of the organization the client comes up with a proposal for a new information system so for that reason they have a rough idea of what that information system will be able to do for them once it is implemented in the organization the system analyst needs to understand the technology and the important ability of any system analyst is to communicate a realistic uh, picture of the new system and what it will do for the users and managers the system analyst no should not fake it should not uh, do any wrong advertisements about the information system he should give the exact real picture of the new system as to what it will do for the users and managers of the organization this basically prevents any unrealistic expectations of the client from the information system so managing the expectations begins with development of the business case for the system and then extends all the way through training people to use the finished system so when you have to manage the expectations first of all you have to develop a business case for the system right and from the uh, development of the business case of the system it goes up to training the people finally when the system would be implemented people would need to be trained to use the new system and the relationship between a system analyst skills and system development life cycle are depicted in the figure here so in this figure you can see the relationship between the skills of a system analyst and various stages of the system development life cycle now this is the last skill that is the interpersonal skill that we are studying today of the system analyst when i started with this uh, series that is the qualifications of a system analyst i told you this, uh, there are four skills that are required as the qualification of for any system analyst the first one being your analytical skills then your technical skills then your management skills and then your interpersonal skills so today we are at the last skill that is the interpersonal skill and why are these four skills required as the qualification of any system analyst this is because that each stage of system development life cycle one of these skills will be used that is why they are considered as a qualification of the system analyst and the relationship between these various stages of system development life cycle and these skills of the system analyst are depicted in this figure so we know that this sdlc or the system development life cycle starts with product identification and selection project identification and selection you identify project and then you select it okay then when the project is selected and identified you start initiating and planning for that project so at this stage that is project initiation and planning management skills of the system analyst are required once project has been initiated and planned you need to do the analysis of that project at this stage technical skills of the system analyst are required then you proceed after the analysis is done you proceed with the logical design of the system and after the logical design is agreed upon by everyone you go on to the physical design of the system now at this stage that is the physical design of the system analytical skills of the system analyst are required after the physical design is developed you finally do the implementation of the system which is basically done by the programmers but for the implementation that means to convey the physical design to the implementers that is the programmers interpersonal skills of the system analyst are 
are required and finally after implementation comes the maintenance so through this diagram you can very well understand that all these four skills considered as the qualification of a system analyst would be required at different stages of the system development life cycle